Hey, I'm Des Asante. Welcome back to the Tech Muse podcast. Today we have uh, the pleasure of chatting with somebody who I was introduced to uh, by a mutual friend whose name is Kathy Heller, uh, who appeared on the show a couple episodes back. If you haven't seen that conversation, I recommend when you're finished watching this one that you go directly over there. Uh, Tech Muse podcast, uh, sorry, techmuseacademy.com and just search for uh, uh, Kathy Heller. Um, that was a good conversation. And today we get to chat with Tiana Gust Gustafson, who is a musician, songwriter, uh, an entrepreneur entrepreneur and a social media marketing uh, guru. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to to picking her brain today to see what kind of pearls of wisdom we can we can dig up. Tiana, how you doing? I'm great. How are you, Daz? Excellent. Excellent. I'm really glad we've uh, we've had the opportunity to connect. And, I, and like we were talking about off the record there, it's uh, it's amazing what you can do these days with the, the technologies that are afforded to us, you know, in terms of networking, in terms of meeting people and, and connecting to be able to help and to be helped, you know, when, when necessary uh, globally. I think it's fantastic. Exactly. And globally, and it's like the press of a button, like somebody can connect you, somebody can find you. That is the power of the internet, which all musicians should harness. <laughs> Indeed, yes. This is something I've been preaching for a while now, and, uh, yes. and from the looks of it, you have as well. Um, before we get too deep into it, um, uh, for those of my listeners and watchers who are not familiar with you, just give us a little bit of, uh, of the backstory, who you are, you know, where you come from, and, and what you're up to these days. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm Tiana Gustafson, and in the music business, my name was Tiana Starr um, as an artist, so you can Google either of those. And I started my music career at 11, and I started booking my own paid gigs at 16, like big festivals. I was on major radio in Nashville. I went to Berklee College of Music. I made my living this whole time as a musician and as a teacher, a producer, and songwriter. And then I worked, I moved to LA afterwards and I worked at Sony Records, started my own record label, Coffee Shop Go Records. And what I found was holding me back was online marketing and marketing. And I kept having people say, hey, you should get discovered by blogs and you should get your name in front of this and that. And I really didn't know what people meant. So I decided to get my master's degree in new media marketing from Full Sail University, which I graduated as salutatorian in my class. So now with my undergrad from Berkeley and my master's degree from Full Sail, I really felt like I came into my own. And since then, that's been the last four years, I've been um, still pursuing, you know, I still get placements. I've had over 40 of my songs placed in music and TV and film, all self-placed because of what I do in online marketing. And I've also had the experience of getting to work with artists like Dwight Yoakam, um, Dr. Holly Lucille, who's also a rock musician. She's been on, she's had her own TV show. And I've done their social media and marketing campaigns. So my whole passion now does is getting to share with musicians and entrepreneurs how to truly harness the internet to open up any door they dream of. Right. Yes, this is right up my alley. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I'm so excited. To yeah, these types of things really, uh, really, really get me fired up as well. It's yeah. just the it's the power that we have that just simply didn't exist, you know, uh, 15, 20 years ago, right? Uh, it's a brave new world. And uh, I've been a student of it uh, myself, as as you have been. In fact, Berkeley and Full Sail, uh, it makes me wonder okay. if you're still paying that off, because that's, uh, that's a lot of schooling. <laughs> yes, yes. But I have, a, I have a plan with my online marketing stuff we can talk about that's gonna it's allowed me to pay down that stuff so much and get to probably pay it off in the next year or two totally which as you know with huge student loan debt from Berkeley and full sale um, especially Berkeley uh, it's like a lot of people they go to school right they spend over a hundred thousand dollars and they and then they come out of school and they're like um but how do i actually make money with my music yes and that's my specialty and i really there are so many ways people can do that with online marketing indeed i 100 percent agree and i'm looking forward to uh to digging some of those out, out of your your head there today <laughs> do it. i'm all open i i don't hold back so before before we get too far into that, one thing that you mentioned that has me curious, and, and it was also the focus of my conversation with Kathy, is you mentioned that you've gotten a number of your own original pieces of music uh, licensed. I imagine that's to to film and television, perhaps maybe ad campaigns. Um, and you you mentioned that you did it yourself, and I'm curious about that because I'm actually that's something I'm looking into now. In fact, I'm involved with a group of veteran musicians that go by the name the Rad Collective, uh, and they are in 
in the process now of trying to put together a bit of an entrepreneurial effort in that arena. And so I'm really curious, how did you go about doing that? How did you go about making the connections you needed to make and getting your, your, your music in front of the right people? Sure. Okay, so I have... It's not going to be a secret anymore. Okay, so the way Kathy does it is she's she's focusing on the ad agency, so I definitely recommend everyone go and listen to her. And I'm actually building her website right now and a new site for her. Um, but check out her for ad agency stuff. I've got my stuff placed in more indie films as well as some um, NBC, VH1, um, different placements like that, TV and film. So I'll share with you a couple ways that I did that. Um, one of the ways is by having my website and my music featured on that all these years, right, and having a press kit and having it laid out really effectively, when I was referred by people, let's say I saw an ad in Music Connection magazine or on um, a musician sent something my way, this is one of the ways that I'm going to tell you another go-getter way. Okay. Um, so when somebody referred it to me, I would send them my website and I would just say, hey, listen, here's a few links to check out. This goes along with what you were looking for and because it was laid out and I followed up I secured like the NBC morning show gig and they placed a lot of my songs they licensed over 40 and they used several of them on air if you search like Tiana Star NBC it comes up okay so that's one way the second way is um, I found out kind of accidentally um, I wanted to be featured on Sundance Film Festival's TV show. I kept watching some of my favorite artists, including Rachel Yamagata, and I had done all this digging for a couple years prior, and I just loved this stage, and I kept visualizing myself on that stage, this Sundance Film Festival TV show, right? And I always wanted to go to the film festival and meet, uh, you know, filmmakers. And so I decided one day to email them myself, right? And again, once again, had my Facebook links, had my um, website links, had it all organized, really simple. And they booked me right away. I was, And then they actually featured my music and my thing for the feature of the day, even above celebrities, bigger celebrities. And so that was another way was just being a go-getter and making sure that that was in line. And then what happened from here, Daz, is the next thing. When I went to Sundance Film Festival, I was surround. I brought with me, I had made like a best of Tiana, like my Tiana mix, because I've released like four albums. So I took the ones, I did some research on like, you know, more film friendly placement tunes, right? And I took that with me and everywhere I went, I was giving out this CD in not, and not like in an annoying way, people like, you know, it's better to me if I made like three real connections than 100, like, you know, I'm talking about if I was sitting with somebody and I learned, I would, you know, gradually stay in the conversation. Well, where do you get your music from for your film? Because when you guys go to these film festivals, it's filmmakers, it's not musicians. Mm. And this is a little tip I want to give people. For those of you who can travel to events like that, like even Cannes and Sundance and South by Southwest, the thing about South by Southwest, though, is that's a lot more music based. I promise if musicians would go to places that there aren't as many musicians, that's your in. Mm. So from just doing that, a guy that I met on a bus and a guy that I met in line at a party, I got some more placements with Sharon Stone movies. It was my music was the feature film. He's actually hired me to write with him. He's thrown me some other placement stuff. And then the other guy, same thing. I met him on a bus. I gave him a CD, but we made a real connection. We stayed friends. I wrote for another two of his movies. Huh, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting thing that the, the thing that I want to highlight in what you've just told us there is, is the value of making connections. And it's kind of what we hinted at at the beginning of this conversation, you know, and, and, and that we're able to do that in more powerful ways these days. But ultimately speaking, when you get, when you put aside all of the social media profile sites and, 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 and all of the technologies that we have, uh, uh, you know, email list automation, all of that stuff, those are all tools that serve the main primary purpose of making connections with people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's especially important as musicians, as uh, original artists who are trying to grow a following around their music or their art, um, that that be the focus. And I think that that's where a lot of, a lot of uh, people are missing the mark. Uh, yeah. The question I hear a lot is, how do I make more sales? How do I sell more more downloads, more CDs, this and that? And yes, obviously, as a uh, um, as a business owner, um, the 
you know, bringing in some sort of revenue is sort of the whole point, right? Yeah, you're in business to make money. It's not a hobby. That's true. However, the money comes, especially yeah. with something like music, the money comes yeah. from the connections and the relationships. Yeah. And and the re it's sort of almost a byproduct, naturally, of it. It's like, I've mentioned this a number of times before, but it's different when you have a product uh, that solves a, a particular problem, you yeah. know, um, because then you just simply go out and find people that have that problem and present them with your solution. But with music, it's a bit different. Different. It's much yeah. more uh, connection based. Would you agree with that? I would. I would say so. I've been working with entrepreneurs, not just music, music business owners, but also other ones. And I will tell you, I think it's the same key to all of it, though, is that, okay, you master your craft first, right? So if I gave them a CD that was terrible music, that, then it doesn't matter how nice I am because I'm awesome. <laughs> but if my music isn't awesome, that won't work. There, there's a combination just like what you're talking about. So I believe in mastering your music or mastering your craft, right? That is number one. But every day, also mastering making connections and marketing. And marketing is really connecting, right? And you're able to connect with more people if you're like tuned into yourself. So just exactly what you're talking about. I'm just high-fiving you <laughs> saying like, like, yes, does exactly because because of social media, though, and even list automation, if you're being authentic to yourself and you're not just sending out a sales pitch, then then people will connect more with you. And one thing like Jim, Ro it was a, it's not Jim Rohn, it's um, one of the other self-development coaches. And he said, like, if you want to make a lot of money, then figure out how to bring a lot of value to as many people as possible. So yes. your music is valuable, but it's like it has to be the way to for people to find out about it is marketing. Mm. So you make your music awesome, that's your value, right? And then the marketing and the personal connections that you make, whether one to one like you and I right now, or the people watching this that I may never meet, when I'm authentic and you're being authentic, which we are, mm. then that resonates. Yes, so that absolutely. Was a little feel with that but I totally agree with you it's about the connection yeah and and um you're right to say you know you got to focus on your craft that has to be good and and I would like to say that that should go without say but I don't think I, I think that some people miss that as well so that they should be do. emphasized <laughs> right you've got to have your your skills set down and you've got to you know continue to work on that that is part of it and hopefully if you are uh, passionate about your, your music that that's something that comes naturally yeah. um, but you're but the uh, and that is the value that you add however I'd like to add on top of that that yeah. during the process of building connections and relationship with folks there is a there is value to that as well Yes, I, I found that a lot of uh, a lot of people are um, increasingly sort of lonely these days, even though they're connecting on Facebook and Twitter to all kinds of people and they're posting their selfies and this and that and getting comments and so on and so forth. There's still this this sense of disconnect that, that a lot of people have. And I think they're really hungry for authenticity, for an Absolutely. authentic connection. And I believe as musicians, we can harness that, you know, um, and, and we can provide that as part of the value that we add. Would you agree with that? That is so beautiful, Daz. You are very eloquent. And I am excited to get to chat with you and continue this relationship. And there's, um, there's been a lot of business research I've done with, um, you know, reaching out to other markets. And I really recommend musicians take advantage of that. Um, one woman, she, Brene Brown, I think she did a talk on TED, TED Talks with uh, Vulnerability. And I don't follow tons of her work, but I thought it was an interesting post. And that whole vulnerability uh, with songwriting, even when you get together with somebody and you guys are co-writing with somebody, that's like what we're doing right here, right? So people, if musicians could get vulnerable and stay authentic with social media marketing, whether they're blogs or their video or going live and posting on Facebook, and if they could get out of their own way with thinking like, oh, I'm posting too much or this or that, and really just be like, I'm going to give give, give. And then when I ask for a sale, people want to give you that sale because you've given so much value. Gary yes. Vaynerchuk wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Mm -hmm. And the premise of it though, is that like, it's like jab, 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 right hook. So meaning give, 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 ask for the sale. So I think what's happening with the online marketing and people doing the, the email newsletters or the social media posts, people are just posting about, hey, I have a gig. Hey, here's my new song. Hey, buy my album that has to stop yeah. you before you post about any of that you need to give at least three to four posts and that means three to four emails also 
of where you are giving somebody value. And the way musicians can give value is why don't you share how you warm up your voice? Mm -hmm. Why don't you share a cool new scale and how a beginning guitarist could learn it? That's what people want to know from their musicians, right? Des, yeah. like, who is your favorite musician? Like, what got you interested in music? I'll give you an example. <clears throat> okay, well, my favorite musician, that's a tough one to answer because it depends on from what perspective I'm, I'm making yeah. that determination. Anything. I, I'll tell you the, 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 my favorite musician who is extremely good at the things we're discussing is Amanda Palmer. I don't know if you're familiar yes, with her. Yes, I am familiar with Amanda Palmer. Yes, she's so, amazing at this. <laughs> so, so let's use her as an example. Okay, so, but when you started music, so what, so if you were watching Amanda Palmer, what behind the scenes would you have wanted to see from her, Des? Like you personally, if you were like, I wish I could be a fly on the wall in this scenario. What well, scenario? I can tell you some of the things I did see, in fact, that got me uh, interested in her and her okay. music. Uh, and that were, that was um, um, her uh, discussion on, being able, being comfortable asking people things and how she struggled with this, uh, this difficulty uh, in her earlier years. I, that's the first thing I heard of her that was before I'd, I'd ever heard any of her music. And I thought right. that, that vulnerability, that expressiveness yeah. uh, really ca captivated me. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that I'm a huge Amanda Palmer fan and I actually don't like a lot of her music. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so this is perfect, Des. This is giving me goosebumps. Okay, because if musicians watching this, please listen up right now to what we're talking about. Des just shared that he actually was drawn to Amanda Palmer's music, not because of her music, but because of who she was and the vulnerability that she shared. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. When I was doing social media marketing for a band, I was telling them that, please, let's do a film behind the scenes of in the studio songwriting, like the stuff that you may be scared to share with somebody. That's actually what people are going to connect with. And it's the same reason why in songwriting, when you hear a broken hearted song like okay for example one of my all-time favorite songs is creep by radiohead mm -hmm. and it was the first song i learned on guitar and it was just like i'm a creep i'm a weirdo like like i was in high school 16 years old i moved my whole life i always felt like a creep i'm a weirdo i don't belong here and but by somebody saying that and singing it so beautifully, I felt like I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. And so maybe by you hearing Amanda talk about that, you're like, yeah, me too. So now I'm going to check out your music. So if it's just that if musicians could share on social media and on videos, and we have live stream now, Facebook live stream, and I have a free guide. I can, um, I'll give a link at the end that everyone can download. It takes you, walks you step by step through it. If musicians could get people behind the scenes on their thoughts, their processes, that's value. So yeah. when they're ready to do a campaign or a Kickstarter or sell a song, then everyone that's been following them is like, of course I'm gonna give you a dollar, $10, 20, like that's so small, that's a small amount of money. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, my beautiful lady Carol and I, we play and write together and we just go as Des and Carol. Um, mm -hmm. and, and uh, she has. She likes to write. I'm not much for writing. I'd rather do video and have conversations like this, yeah. right? But she loves to write, and she's quite good at it. And so she writes uh, blog posts at our website, um, oh, which is desandcarol.com for those who are curious. Just remember, Des has two Zs in it. Um, and one of the she wrote a three part series called the Body Love Challenge, and oh. and it was basically expressing her own. Um, you know, body dysmorphic issues that everyone has. And you look in the mirror and you see all the things you don't like and so on and so forth. And uh, so she wrote a three-part series about that to uh, that topic in an effort to sort of be vulnerable in, an, uh, in the hopes of, of helping to get over those things. Put it right. out there and, and let, people, let people see, right? And so that, for one, is an example of, of it's got nothing to do with our music. It's on our website, which is about our music, but right. it's in the blog. And it's right. about who we are, who she That's is in, in this particular instance. In fact, um, uh, oddly enough, on Saturday, we're having our, our, our fourth pants optional uh, gig, which, is, which was inspired from that blog series. Series. Uh, yeah. She wrote the posts and she and, and then we, we thought, you know, what better way to sort of 
become <laughs> become comfortable in your own skin, then let's play a show in our underwear. So we did, and we encouraged people to do the same. It turned out fantastic. It never got weird or creepy. Uh, oh, yeah. And it was a bunch of people of all shapes and sizes coming together in their skivvies and enjoying music and hanging out. And it was fabulous. So we're doing it again on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you, if That's you, amazing. If you follow me on uh, Periscope or Busker, you'll probably see some live stream footage of it. <laughs> Oh, you're on Periscope. Oh, that is so perfect. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And the truth is, like, we as artists, yes, your music website should be geared towards if you're pitching for industry, but the blog, and this is what is amazing about blogging, is that you can do video blogs, you can do the podcast, like this is a video podcast. Um, you can do, you can share that behind the scenes, you can record, I can give a flow of how people can do that real quick, but um, you get to be authentically you, and that's the beautiful part about it. And the thing is that we are all these holistic human beings. And we're not just like, I'm just a singer songwriter like me. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I am a musician. I also like gymnastics. Like, you know, we all have these random things we love and that all goes together to make us who we are. Mm -hmm. And when we're authentic and share who we are with the world, you never know who you might connect with. I actually landed a $2,000 contract for um, a marketing client. Do you know why? She saw me singing on my Facebook live stream to see. Yeah. And she's like, I love you. I think we'll totally connect. You're hired. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Perfect example. I love that. <laughs> and, it was just, and it's not a musician client. It's an author. But it's like we and that's the way music, the value can connect all of us. So Absolutely. how powerful when you combine music with marketing. Absolutely. I love your story as well, Bez. Thank you for sharing that with me. I love oh, my that. pleasure. <laughs> I talk yeah. about body love all the time. As a musician in the music business, as a, as a woman, the pressure that I had when I was living down in Los Angeles, I'm four hours north now. I chose to live away from the city. I love where I live. I, I go down there if I need to. But um, it's like, it's crazy. And it's such a lie. It's such a lie. Mm. Because like who you are, it, you don't have to play the game. Right. You don't have to play the game. I wrote a song about that called Room to Grow, how it says like, the lyric is like, you can never be too thin. Um, well, I didn't read that book and I don't play games I can't win. Mm. Like, you don't need to play. And so whether somebody's telling you you're too old or you're too young or you're too fat or you're too skinny, that's baloney. Yes. And you can play music and be authentically who you are every single day of your life and bring value to the world. And that's the truth. Amen to that one. <laughs> Absolutely. It's funny because um, uh, Carol is also a massive Amanda Palmer fan. And uh, and one of the things that Amanda did a, a, a few years ago is at the end of a gig, she stripped completely nude, com oh completely nude, and she gave all of her fans markers to write on her body. Uh, and that was, in, uh, in her words, that was an exercise in being vulnerable and trusting her, her fans. Now, I don't know if we're quite ready to go to that extreme. I'm ready right there. Yeah. <laughs> I did see a very touching thing, and I have my own modesty things. Um, but it's like I saw this video on Facebook, and it was about a woman. She had her underwear on still, but she had posted a sign about how she just – hated her body and she was doing this as an experience she closed her eyes she was like blindfolded and she was asking people to write the words that they thought of when they saw her and it was like it was really beautiful how people were just writing beautiful words on her and how we're all like you just mentioned like we're in these social media bubbles and the reason I mentioned going to the events is like even if you're a mom like me and you've got little kids I think it's really important to get to events to be around human beings and to yes. make real connections and if you planned in like three times a year or four times a year where you just go away for a weekend. A lot of these events are on, you could take the weekend away and men, women, whoever, and, and really connect with others because of the connection But it, or, or get outside and like this woman had somebody write on herself. I just think we have to start connecting with people again away from the internet. And even video like what you and I are doing right now is also very powerful, much more powerful than just a call and just obviously an email. Email, right we are really connecting absolutely and so that is beautiful and we should connect with each other a lot more because that's really 
the bigger picture. Indeed, yeah. And it seems to be the sort of the theme of our conversation today is the is the importance and the value of making genuine, authentic connections with people. And all of the successes that we're looking for, they just tend to happen as a result of that yeah. endeavor. So yeah. l- let me ask you this. Um, for Because you do have uh, uh, great prowess when it comes to social media marketing and, and the stuff that we can do online, yeah. if, if I was somebody sort of just getting started, let's say I've got my craft down, I've got you know yeah. some great music, um, um, uh, I don't have anything yet, don't have a website, uh, maybe I have a Facebook profile and that's about it. What would you say would be the first few steps uh, of advice to give somebody to get started? Okay. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Dun, 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 dun. Are you ready for this? Okay. I'm ready for this. I had to like finish that whole like loop though. I get you. Let's see him. Too legit. Okay. So this is my favorite, Daz. Okay. This is my favorite. Okay. So I I created a metaphor for musicians with marketing. Okay. Okay. The circle of fifths for online marketing. Okay. There's five things you must do do and I don't care how you figure out how to do it I actually do care how you figure out how to do it and I'm actually creating a course that's like so affordable it's like a tenth of the cost of working with me if I set you up with it with musicians in mind but let me tell everybody the five so whether you have a website now or not there there needs to be some stuff integrated Number one, you do need a website and you need to host your own music. And to be honest, the next time I release an album, I will not be putting it on iTunes or Spotify or anything. I want to get paid for my music. Mm -hmm. So that's just my personal opinion. People can do what they want. But um, you need a website and you need to have your music on there. And that's where you send people to sell your music. You be your own record label. Okay. So with that in mind, one is a website, and then I'm going to give examples of how people can visually see this. So that's your circle of fits one. Number two, you need a blog. That is where you provide valuable information and resources, and that's where people connect with you, just like me and you, Des, have been talking about. You need a blog. You can put videos on it behind the scenes. You could write. I, I, share, people, I share with people how they can do this. Don't worry about your how right now. I want people to realize, don't worry about the how right now. Just mm. listen to what I'm saying. Mm. So website, blog. Then you need social media, Facebook, number one, or Instagram, whatever it is, but it needs to match your vibe. It's all branded. I'll talk about the branding in a second. So website, blog, social media, list building. You're, you need to have an automated way for people to contact you on your website, a pop-up, a bar up top, and it's not, it's not a sign-up for my newsletter. That does not convert. Mm-hmm. You need to have something that says, like, sign up here to get my brand new single or sign up here to get my um to get behind my behind the scenes training on how to write a song like ask your audience when you're creating your freebie ask your audience on social media if i could give you something behind the scenes of what i do what would you guys like to know about you yes. can know in one day what freebie you're going to create it doesn't have to be these long ebooks or pdfs but it's usually it's probably not going to just be a song it could be like get a free song and also get my behind the scenes training on how I write a song and you can too. Okay. Like all of you could be doing that. And the fifth part, the circle of fifths, I'll review it in a second is advertising. Mm. People do not launch their artists, Adele, the Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney and all them. Do you guys really think that they're not putting huge advertising campaigns behind this? And you might say, I don't have money for all that. That's not true. I can show you with under $100 a month on how you could actually accomplish all those things once you're set up. It might be more money to set up, get a credit card, get a PayPal credit, get something going, get those five things in place. And for like $3 a day even on Facebook ads or doing a $50 campaign a month, boosting one post for $5, you guys, it's so important. So let me review it one more time, Des, and thanks for letting me be long-winded because it's it's the big picture. Mm-hmm. And I want to explain it's like baking a cake. If you don't include every ingredient and do those ingredients correctly, the cake will not, it'll be flat, it'll taste yucky, right? Mm -hmm. Or people are eating the ingredients on their own. They're like, oh, I have a website, so, um, but that's just the oil. You need the eggs, you need the flour, you need the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll (laughs) review. A website, you must have a website to host your own music and to sell your own music. So that means an ability to sell your music there. Number two, a blog embedded into your website. Yes, I recommend WordPress. If you're not on WordPress, 
you really need to switch. Yes, I agree. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad because I was like, we didn't talk about this prior. And I really, I, I thought because I looked at your side, I, I was pretty sure. But I was just like, okay, I hope it's WordPress. Yep. Number, it's the number one SEO, you guys, which means search engine optimization. Just installing this uh, plugin called Yoast automatically helps. And then when you integrate it. But I teach all that. So, again, website blog to provide value social media needs to match the headers there's some sites i can give reference to number four is your list building you need an automated list thing that comes up on your website there are ways with wordpress where you don't need to know code to do this and number five is advertising budget right. so i can i go into depth with people so if somebody wanted a free consult with me does they could go to my website and arrange that but I am going to I am releasing a course in the next 2 weeks where it walks people through those circle of fifths for marketers for musicians right. and it teaches them step by step how to at least get the basics in place. Interesting. I I but I want people to have that value. I want them to understand it takes all those five things. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's very, um, very similar to um, what I call my fan farming strategy. Nice. Um, I, I at, at the Tech News Academy, of course, I create information products. And um, one of them is a course called the Artist Promotion Blueprint, which yes. is very, uh, very much along the lines of what you've just described. It's teaching musicians how to set up their infrastructure, uh, as you mentioned, with the website, the blog, the social media platforms, the, the consistent branding, etc., the email autoresponder, and all of that, and then how to um, uh, 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 grow their audience via content marketing for organic traffic and paid ads, because right. there, are, there are only two kinds of traffic. There's right. free traffic, organic right. traffic, and there's paid traffic. That's uh, right. Pay per click or CPM or, or whatnot. And then again, without getting too geeky, because I am a bit of a marketing nerd, um, yeah. th it, that's essentially all there is. But like you said, you have to have that infrastructure in yes. place first. It's yeah. like, it's like, for example, um, I forget who it was now, but there was a musician who had um, a YouTube video that went viral. <clears throat> it just, <clears throat> excuse me, it just caught on. It was unique yeah. uh, and whatnot. And, and all of these millions of views and nothing to send them to. Right. No website. Or even no. an ad. If yeah. you, get, you get an ad placement or a, or a marketing placement, but then if you don't have a place to automate your own sales and your own new leads, because maybe somebody's not ready to buy. Most people will not just come to your website the first time and buy. But right. you know what they'll do? They will sign up on your email list if yeah. you have a free offer that is intriguing to them. Absolutely. And then when you get those emails, yes, totally agree. People are losing money. They are sitting on gold mines essentially. And then when the opportunity comes, okay, so Livingston Taylor at Berkeley College of Music, he's, he was like my, one of my favorite professors, James Taylor's brother. And he said this, and this is the key to all of this, is success happens when preparation which is the things we're talking about. That's the preparation, mastering your music and having a system in place. Preparation meets opportunity. Yes. An ad placement, a viral video, um, somebody even sending your information to somebody. Hey, my cousin works at Sony or they work at uh, Warner Chapel. And then it's like, yeah, but I don't have anything in place. You mm -hmm. could be the best musician in the world in the practice room or even on stage and the best songwriter. But if you are not portraying your stuff and look branded like a million bucks without having a million bucks, it's going to fall short. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's, so easy nowadays. Like, uh, I mean, a lot of people get uh, sort of scared off by the technical side of things. A lot yeah. of musicians are, are more right brained and creative. And, yeah. uh, and that's, that's just a, 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 um, a trend, I suppose, a statistically relevant fact. Um, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You know, it's not like 1995. I don't, I mean, I have a, a network of websites <clears throat> uh, that, that have all kinds of under the hood functionality, payment processing, automated delivery of content, all this stuff. I don't know a lick of HTML. The only thing I know about HTML is how to spell it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I can Google, I can Google some help. I have a pro, I have a full-time developer on my team now. Right. Who does that with me. Yes. But you don't, you don't need that. No, that's my point. You don't need yeah. it. <laughs> so, and here's the thing, Des, wouldn't you agree that if you say something's hard, you're going to make it hard. But if you say something is figure outable, that one of my um, business marketing people I've been following for a while called Marie Forleo, and she has this saying, I mean, I don't think you could trademark this or anything, but everything is figure outable. Hmm. Now, if you go to life with that mentality, that everything is figure outable, and if 
those five things, like if somebody was watching this and they're like, Des and Tiana just told me that there's these five things I need to figure out. And they wrote it down because they, they authentically were like, yes. And they didn't shut down and get all lazy and annoying. And they were just like, I'm open. I'm ready. I want to do this then they would just be like, everything is figure outable. And today, I'm going to put on a WordPress hat. Do you know this switch for me, Des, when I was, um, I didn't want to take a job. I have made a living as a musician and then as a marketer and a musician. I do not work for other people. Mm. Okay, so how was I able to do that? Because I would put on a hat and I would say, well, I could either go and put on like a waiter hat or a waitress hat or a teacher, like a, I mean like a full-time teacher. I did music teaching, but I was still an entrepreneur, right? I did it. I like worked for myself. Right. And um, so I could either have to go work for somebody else and put on that hat or I could like figure some stuff out and put on that hat like I'm going to learn WordPress if that's what it takes. I'm going to learn blogging. I'm going to learn how to like place an ad. I'm going to figure this out. Yes. Yes. And nowadays there is so much information. I mean, the information that we're imparting right now is just a drop in the bucket, especially when you get into the world of podcasts. Um, yeah. Like this, this conversation that we have will be a video uh, uh, on YouTube, but I also strip the audio out and it becomes a podcast in the iTunes and Stitcher and so forth. Right. And I am an information junkie and podcasts are a wealth of free on demand information and 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 not dated we're talking like i i listen to a lot of business mentors yeah. and they're telling me the thing they did yesterday that yeah. worked not the not the business textbook that was written you know and out of date a, a year ago <laughs> exactly they're like hey yesterday i placed this ad and i had this 75 percent increase in conversions because i did beep 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 boop. Yeah. like you know like hello um <laughs> Yeah, so there's no excuse no these excuses. days. <laughs> and if there is, I don't want to work with people. Yeah. Like, I don't work with people with excuses. Because, like, seriously, I mean, my little seven year old son figured out on his own, like, he does Minecraft stuff. Mm -hmm. And he literally figured out how to get the video working and how to do his screen without, like, I use screen flow and I use, like, things like Zoom and I record or go to webinar. No, he figured out a free way, my seven year old. Yeah. With, by YouTubing. <laughs> yeah how to do this. And he's like, yep, mom, I just recorded my first Minecraft video. And his video, his face is on it. I'm like, ah. first of all, I'm glad my husband's in IT security, right? I'm like, I'm like, I'm calling. I'm like, why is it figured out how to record his video? But to the rest of you, get a grip. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how young, old, young, old you are, you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. My seven-year-old did. Without yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter, Sophia, who's 10 right now, uh, she's the same. She, she's the same. She jumps on YouTube and figures it all out and then comes and shows me the results afterwards, and it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I remember when I was trying to teach myself guitar at 16, so there wasn't YouTube yet. Mm. And I was literally going through my Sarah McLaughlin songbook, and I was, like, drawing in the chord charts from, like, the chord chart thing from Guitar Center, right? Like, so I... I was like drawing and now you could just like YouTube like how to perfectly play like you know shows crows leaving Las Vegas and yeah. it's like nah, 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 nah. you're like oh my goodness yeah with multi-camera angles and, <laughs> and slow motion sections I know it's great <laughs> so the point is ladies and gentlemen of the audience there's no excuse and the the one thing I mean it can be a little bit challenging trying to um, use your exercise discernment and figure out what information is most relevant or not um, yeah. and 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 that and if if you uh, struggle with that as an issue then it might be worth it to make a small investment in a course where everything is is, is lined out perfectly and you don't have to go hunting all over the internet so Tiana, Tiana, you're working on a course of your own. Um, ArtistPromotionBlueprint.com is available for those who want to check that out as well. Because uh, sometimes that does uh, um, get you to the result a little quicker without having to surf around and try to figure out what's relevant and what's not. But one way or the other, educate yourself in whatever you need to be educated in and just take a bold action. Get the website up, get your branding consistent, get your email list, uh, opt-in forms placed where they need to be so that you have the ability to start collecting a fan base to grow a database of people who've raised risen their hand and said i'm interested in you for some reason tell yeah. me more and then you have the opportunity to connect on a regular basis through your content and through your social media posting and to build rapport and relationships with these people yeah. And with your email list, you can you can scale it. You know, if you had ten fans, I say this all the time. If you only had ten fans, you can hand write them a letter, put it in an envelope, lick it, and send it. But when you have a thousand or ten thousand, then you need to you, you know to exercise some of the technologies and to be able to still communicate genuinely and authentically with more people at the same time. 
Absolutely. That yeah. is such a great point, building rapport. Yeah, it does. That's awesome. And I believe in courses. I also believe in hiring out, do, getting your system set up, and then doing the fulfillment. Because people think when they're trying to even do it all, sorry, that's just not all themselves, then like if it's holding you up, then invest, put it on a card, pay it down, make some money. So yeah. just make it happen. Absolutely. And you and you either spend your time or your money. Yeah. Those it's are the two things you have. It. It's <laughs> just right? energy. So <laughs> musicians need to get out of the poverty mentality. That's a different conversation. But like we are all human beings. We can make things happen. Um, yeah. So that's that's as simple as that is. And I would love to offer, if you don't mind, Des, um, I do have like, I really believe in live streaming. You asked me about how they can authentically connect. I'm sure you agree with Periscope and everything. Yeah. So speak on that a little bit. Speak on that. Okay, so here's the thing, like whether it's Periscope or Facebook live stream, which is really starting to boom, you can do it from your Facebook business page um, or you can use Periscope, either one. I like to do both. Like right now I'm doing a 30-day thing. You can follow me on either one at Tiana Gustafson. But the thing is that you're able to then, right then, authentically connect with people, right, Des? Yes. I personally closed several thousand dollars in one week from two new clients finding me on Periscope. So um, musicians, that's the other important part, having, you know, your music for sale you could have behind the scenes there's so many ways with that you could connect you could have one could be a music day one could be a songwriting day one could be um, a teaching day you can make your own things and you don't have to start with every day you can start with one start with one time mm -hmm. so I created a free guide that is step by step for Facebook live stream but the video checklist and stuff you could use whether you're going live on Periscope or Facebook and that's free and uh, Des would you mind if I shared that link with them please do <coughs> Okay, so it's livestreamtoday.biz. I couldn't get a .com. So that's livestreamtoday.biz. And, or as you say, Zed. Are you Canadian, Des? I am, yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm hearing the accent, and then you said Zed, and I'm like, okay, he's Canadian. Um, so livestreamtoday.biz. All of you are welcome. I created a free guide just for you. It's a printout. It's step-by-step -step with pictures, and it has a checklist, which I love. So, um, and follow Des on Periscope. Des, what's your Periscope? Uh, it's Des and Carol. Uh, okay, and we're, we're Des and Carol pretty much everywhere um, for the musical stuff and Tech Muse everywhere for the other stuff uh, that, that we get into here. Um, mm -hmm. Incidentally, I'll, pay, I'll put a link uh, in, the, in the notes that, that you just described here for this free guide um, mm -hmm. so people can check it out. That's great. Listen, have you heard yet of a new uh, player in the live stream arena called Busker? No, I haven't. Okay, well, you got to check out Busker. Right okay. now, it's iOS only. The Android version's not out yet, but should be within the month or so. Busker is very, very much like Periscope in the way that it's set up. Uh, okay. You know, uh, 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 viewers can type on the screen and they can hit like. It's not quite as rapid fire with the hearts like Periscope, but I you get a little button, you can hit like uh, okay. and comment. But there is one vital difference, and, okay. and that is that your viewers have the opportunity to tip you if they <laughs> enjoy what you're doing. That's cool. Yeah, it happens via PayPal. Okay, so Busker is coming together for me now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we, uh, Carol and I have been uh, simulcasting on uh, Periscope and Busker for the last few weeks. And oh. it's amazing the support, the community, really? the musical community on Busker. It's still small right now. And I don't know what will happen once the Android market gets involved and it blows up. But right now, there's such a, a, a thriving musical community of people sharing each other's posts, uh, uh, broadcasts, and actually tipping with real live dollars and cents. <laughs> right? That's amazing. That's and, incredible. So talk about immediate cash flow like we're talking about being resourceful. If you're amazing at your craft and you set up a system like this, and I'd love to show them my light ring here too. Um, if you set up a little tripod with your phone and the light ring, like make sure your lighting looks decent, friends. And like you could be making money today if yes. you're awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, the, and, and, and literally instantly with something like Busker, you, yeah. you, you, you hit the go live button, you start strumming and humming. And as people join in, you could literally be making cash right there. And, and you could make such like a call to action. Like you could say, hey, listen, I'm doing my fundraising. I'm trying to get to Sundance Film Festival. And so what I'm offering is this today. Anyone that tips $20 or above, you're going to get this. Like you can have a sign. One second. I'm going to grab something. Watch. Okay. okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so like this is me getting creative. Okay, so like you guys, you like let's say somebody. I'm giving some tips because this is what I do on Periscope stuff too. But if if you were a musician and you were trying to raise big funds for an album or whatever, which I really believe in providing value, but you could list on a whiteboard. You could be like, okay, today here's what I'm offering. Bang, bang, bang. Yep. You know, and then you could tell them where to go and say, listen, when you send that, I get your email address and I'm going to send you that information. Right. You could even like up that game quick. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> I like it. I'm like, look, uh, you know, ask for the sale. You never know who's watching. 100%. I had to buy me this like super fancy room on a tour. Um, I never knew the guy. I know this sounds weird, but it's actually not. I worked with him in the music business. He lived in London. He had referred a lot of business my way. I think I did a recording for him. Okay. So I'd, I'd worked with him. It wasn't just like a rant. I'm going to buy you a hotel room. No. What <laughs> <laughs> I had my mom and my son with me, um, and I still check for safety. But anyway, this nice man, and he's like, listen, I want to help support you on your tour. And and I didn't even ask for this. I, I wasn't that good at the time for asking for sales, and that's why I was more broke. Um, mm, yes. And so, um, and so he, like, bought this fancy. It was on, like, the 12th floor in Breckenridge, Colorado, in this gorgeous, like, suite. And it was paid for. And then I had some other fans who paid for my entire trip to Sundance Film Festival. And listen, I just want to say I'm not like always a huge fan of that because I don't think that you're a charity case. I think you're a human being that is a business person. But if you're giving somebody value, let's say you create. So anytime somebody does that for me, I definitely send them like a huge goodie bag and presents. And I provide them with some kind of value. But I, I just want to say you never know. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the more often you put yourself out there in an authentic way and the, and the, um, the broader a scope, uh, uh, an audience that you can actually get in front of, the more that this, these types of things will just naturally happen. It's just the way of things. And it's, it's yeah. difficult to, it, it almost starts to, to sound on the verge of, you know, I'm okay with law of attraction, guys. I yeah. believe in law of attraction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I have I, I, I have evidence in my own life that supports these things too, but that's a whole other conversation. That's a different conversation. We'll do it some other time and we'll light the candles and we will get all into it. Absolutely. <laughs> in, in fact, Carol and I are starting um, a podcast called The Fearless Creative and perhaps we can have a chit chat in that context. Um, Absolutely. On that, I'll get on my that dog show. out. Yeah. My money dog. I have a money dog. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So, and so I guess, how would you, what advice would you give to somebody who's okay now just become aware of live streaming and the power of it to connect it authentically and instantly with people all over the globe? What would you, what advice would you give to someone who has nerves, who doesn't want to hit the go live button? Cause I know I felt that way the first time. Yeah, I, I, I still feel it some days. I'm not in the mood. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. Like, it's just like anything. It's just like getting on stage where it takes time. It takes practice to get good at it. But here's the thing. You guys are all live every day. Okay. I want you to just shift the paradigm. Mm. You go to a bank, you go to Starbucks, you go to a gig, you go to a session, you are live. I think what people are really afraid of is they're seeing themselves and they're hearing their voice and it's just like the first time you record a song right yeah, um, yeah. and it's and you're, it's mirroring back to you but the problem is it's not objective it's subjective like because what we talked about this whole like it's like it's like live dysmorphia yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not real so don't watch a replay if you're not. Just be yourself. Just like if you went to an audition, you could be fearful and hold back from everything. Live is just a way that people can now connect with you. If you don't like how you're looking, what you're sounding like, you can change it. Yeah. But part of it is just letting it go. Absolutely. And it is getting practice. So that's what I would say. And I do want to say, like, I know you and I have talked about so much information today. But to leave them closing thoughts about, like, whoa, they just, like, blew my mind, right? Right. The thing that I would recommend anyone does, like, because even when you go live, if you don't have a link for somebody to sign up and you get their information, then then you're wasting that. 
Yes, they're so, gone, never to be seen they're again. They're gone, never to be seen. <laughs> so I literally, like in my Periscope thing, and you guys can go check this out. At, if you go to my Periscope link at Tiana Gustafson, I have a hyperlink that says, like, you know, get my free guide for blah, blah, blah here. And it literally has that even in the Periscope link. And I never do a live stream without giving a link to a freebie, which is linked to a leadpages.net account and to my Infusionsoft. Or if somebody doesn't have, is, doesn't want to pay for Infusionsoft, MailChimp, yeah. $10 a month. And that's what I was talking about, Des, that is less than a hundred dollars a month so I urge you musicians um, check out Des's training check out my website tianagustafson.com go get the Facebook live stream and like really create you must make a list that it's website blog a link like you must have a freebie so I just yeah. I want to urge them to do that right yes. wouldn't yeah. you agree because then 100%, it's gone 100 percent is is you I, I break it down into a couple of steps one uh, step one is discovery so mm -hmm. that when I when I jump on Busker or Periscope or Facebook Live, which I still don't have on my update, um, I'm, I'm waiting still. When I do that, that is a, a point that becomes a point of discovery. Somebody could stumble upon that broadcast. OK, from there, the goal is now that they now that we've made some type of connection is to collect the contact information so that I can then nurture that connection there and build a rapport and a relationship and turn that person from a casual music enthusiast into a fan into yeah. a super fan which is yeah. also known as a customer <laughs> Absolutely. so so yes i agree 100 percent. that infrastructure must be in place and then all you do is put yourself out there all yes. the time in as many ways as you can always with the call to action hey yes. let, you know i've got something for you just tell me where to send it put your email in here and i'll send it yes. to you and then you can grow that relationship 100 percent important Exactly. And when you have a system to this, so at first, if somebody's watching this, because I know because I work with a ton of musicians and entrepreneurs, and I know when I'm talking to them at first, they're like, oh my goodness, I'm so overwhelmed. First of all, never say that again. You're not overwhelmed. Just say, you know what, I need to figure out where to start. Could you help me? Send someone an email. Send us an email. Send me an email. Um, like there's that part, but then there's also, I literally lost my like track. I don't know what I was going to tell you, Des. But I, essentially, I think I was going to say something along the lines of like, don't get overwhelmed again. Start with step one. Yeah. And I have no idea where I was going to go. With How that. do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? Yes. That's <laughs> one of my favorites. That's it. Well, listen, Tiana, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I do want to be respectful of your time. Um, uh, if, if, uh, where's the best place people can, can connect with you? Obviously, there's TianaGustafson.com, um, where there's a great deal of information. Your blog is there as well, so people can, can uh, get more pearls of wisdom from you. Um, but what about uh, other places online if people want to get a hold of you and say hello? Yeah, so Facebook, Tiana Gustafson, um, on Instagram, Tiana Gustafson, you know, just search my name, yeah. <laughs> Tiana yeah. Gustafson, and you can spell that if somebody's listening on the podcast, Tiana is T-I-A-N-A, -A, and my last name is Gustafson, and I'm going to spell it out, it is G-U-S as in Sam, T as in tree, A-F as in Frank, S as in Sam, O, N as in Nancy, so TianaGustafson.com, and then it links to all my stuff, so I really Perfect. appreciate you guys for having me and you're amazing and I'm so excited about all the other fun things we're going to do absolutely yes I've enjoyed this thoroughly and hopefully we can connect again uh, uh, either in this context or or with uh, my lovely lady Carol on the fearless absolutely. creative podcast which still has yet to go live we're trying to get a few episodes in the can first right yeah uh, and perhaps we'll do a bit of that so once absolutely. again thank you so much TianaGustafson.com for those who want to check it out and we will talk at you next week thank you